Uh, my name is Peter Heffernan. Uh, I'm the Chief Executive of the Marine Institute. And to honor us, I'm Fulcher Kerr of Gaki and Dinian Shah, Kuji First Namara, Fian Okoj Tawaktok Starul in you. It is indeed a great honor for me to welcome uh, all of you here today uh, the Mayor of Galway, the Mayor of Galway City and County. And as a Mayo man, I empathize with the pain you share with Mayo over this weekend. Uh, it is indeed uh, a wonderful occasion today. Uh, we are honored to have representatives of uh, the US uh, and the United Kingdom embassies. Uh, we have our wonderful uh, musicians, who I'll speak of uh, in a little time, uh, members of the board of the Marine Institute, uh, friends, staff, and supporters of the Central Bank, uh, the Marine Institute, and the broader marine community uh, and the coin-loving community of Ireland. Uh, you are most, most welcome to the Marine Institute today. Uh, I want to introduce uh, the Army Brass Band uh, under the stewardship and baton of Captain Brian Prendergast, uh, who have been uh, entertaining you today. Uh, <laughs> Excellent, Captain Prendergast, thank you so much, and to all of your colleagues. Uh, it's now a great pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Mr. Paul Malumbi, who is Director of Currency and Corporate Services uh, with the Central Bank, and with whom uh, it is a great pleasure for the Marine Institute to have here for this very important launch today. Paul. Um, and distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Central Bank of Ireland, I am pleased to welcome you here today to this magnificent premises in the building of the Marine Institute and to welcome you to the launch of our uh, Philip Holland coin. Um, the coin is a 15 euro silver proof coin that honours John Philip Holland the Irish inventor of the modern submarine. It is the first coin of a new multi-year series of coins that the bank will issue to honor Ireland's impressive scientific and technological tradition. Holland was born in Lascanor, County Clare in 1941, and this year we mark the centenary of his death, which was in Newark, New Jersey in August 1914. Holland's life was extraordinary, and some of the posters here that have been provided to us, and indeed many of you will know a lot more about Holland than I do, but I do recommend you read the posters or talk to some of the people who have been involved in researching him. During his time, he was a member of the Christian Brothers Order. He was a teacher where he, saw, where he taught in various centres around Ireland and his primary focus was always on the physical sciences. Following a time with the Christian brothers, he emigrated to the United States, where he continued to teach the sciences, and he developed technologies to further the concepts for the evolution of the submarine. The result was that the first submarines commissioned 
by both the US Navy and the Royal Navy were based on the designs of John Philip Holland. The USS Holland was commissioned by the US Navy in October 1900 as the first submarine when Holland himself was aged 60. He died on the 12th of August 1914, aged 74. As I say, this coin is the first in a new series of coins that we will issue to honour the extensive and impressive scientific and technological tradition that Ireland has. Indeed, you might argue that the Holland coin combines some of the best aspects of our Irish heritage, because as well as science and technology, it brings together the marine and the education that Holland was committed to. And these are continuing distinguishing features of our economy. You might also add that it could add the feature of the diaspora in that Holland was primarily based in the US for a lot of his research work. The coin features on the obverse side our traditional harp and the year date, which is always the tradition with our collector coin and indeed circulating coins. However, the primary image on the reverse was designed by the artist Mary Gregory. Mary's design features the designing hand of the inventor as it reaches into the coin with the pen, poised to place the final stroke of a technical drawing for the USS Holland. Mary, congratulations to you on your very inventive design, and I understand you are in the position to elaborate a little bit further to us on the design. Is Mary here? And we're now going to get some brief insight into how to take the concepts of a submarine and all that goes with that and the life of our, colleague, our, our uh, hero, Holland. And Mary is going to give us a couple of words on that. I am. <laughs> Please. I was going to talk about the, the inspiration, um, I think, of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which I believe was a great inspiration to uh, early designers uh, designers of the 19th, late 19th century and early 20th century, which inspired in me a great interest because I have an interest in science fiction, so it tied in with what I, I enjoy. Um, I took from that the image in the back, which is the, the pattern, if you like, of the Nautilus shell, the Nautilus being the submarine craft that the mysterious Captain Nimoy in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea commandeered around the under the sea <laughs> and um, so that was my inspiration for the the spiral and for me that brings together very nicely my interest in the natural sciences with the more engineering side of the sciences which is more well it's also very very beautiful and very interesting sometimes but I like the fact that it ties the two sides of the sciences together so that's my uh, <laughs> Uh, if you like, my inspiration for the, the more um, mellifluous, uh, maybe feminine side of the coin. Okay, well, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. I have to say to the layman, I think the design is simple but expressive. And certainly uh, our collector coin customers, the early indications are that, that they respect it and appreciate it. The uh, coin is limited edition, there's uh, only 10,000 of them, and already pre-sales are running at about 20% have already been, been sold. The coins uh, were struck on our behalf by Pobjoy Mint, and I understand that Toya Pobjoy is with us here today. Is Toya here? Very good. Toya, um, I'd like to thank you for another successful collaboration and compliment you on the Mint's expertise in the origination and the manufacture of the striking of these coins. Thank you. We also have here today guests that reflect the variety and the extent of John Holland's life. And in no particular order, I do note that the mayors of Cork, Galway, both city and county, and Drogheda are here. Uh, the Liscanner Committee, who unveiled a statue at the weekend to Holland, is here also. We have um, the Deputy Head of uh, Mission at the British Embassy, Neil Holland, no relation, I understand. 
Lieutenant uh, Sean from the US Embassy Defence Attaché is, is here also. Members of the British Legion are, are, are here and we're really grateful for the support uh, and the interest that we have received in this um, endeavours. We have a number of people to thank for their help in the organisation of this event. Um, Peter, to you and your staff, and to Helen, uh, who have supported us uh, through uh, making this launch possible. We very much appreciate that. And indeed, the marine research vehicle, uh, which uh, the Institute have put on display outside, has been named after Holland. And I do in encourage you to have a look at this and to un understand uh, it, the contribution it has made to marine uh, ad advancement. Um, also to the band uh, uh, from Collins Barrick's uh, for the beautiful music that we've already ha heard. Um, there'll be a competition afterwards to name, and I got the Rod Stewart one. I'll ask someone else to get the, 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 the other ones. Um, but Captain Brian Prendergast and, and, and your, your um, colleagues, we very much appreciate it. Um, in addition to uh, both supporting us here today, I do want to acknowledge, and C Captain Brian will be aware, that his colleagues in Cahill Brewer Barracks um, support other aspects of the work of the Central B Bank and we're very grateful for the continuous uh, uh, support uh, and service we get from the Defence Forces. Special mention must also be made to Mr Tony D D D Duggan. Tony has worked tirelessly to make this event the success it is. Uh, he's a retired uh, schoolmaster from uh, the Christian Brothers in Cork uh, and he is a, a Holland historian. And he has helped the Central Bank uh, understand more about Holland uh, and the contribution and to allow us to uh, educate um, our customers in the work that has taken place on his uh, science and technology uh, endeavours. Um, Tony, I'm, I'm a little jibe at you, but I, I believe that you have been such a help to our collector coin unit that then you've built up such a rapport with them. We're going to miss you badly uh, as we move on to other coins now. Mind you, the Holland coin is not the only notable event for the central bank in the currency area this, this year. As Peter introduced me, I'm the director of currency in the bank, uh, and we're pleased to announce that a new 10 euro banknote will be issued on the 23rd of September. This, like all the other central banks in the euro system, it is the second banknote to be released as part of the Europa series. And this series of banknotes offers enhanced security features and durability, and will circulate in parallel with the first series of tenors. Um, and they, the old series will continue to remain as legal tender for the foreseeable future. So since la early last year, my colleagues at the bank have been actively engaged with businesses to emphasize the importance of being ready for a new 10 euro note. In July, we've held a seminar we aim to promote the various supports available to b b b businesses Online training and familiarization is available as well. It is imperative that businesses ensure that they are ready for the 10 euro note and by training their staff and updating their machines, they will be able to support all of us as consumers as we take the steps to, in, to have two forms of the 10 euro note in circulation. I now wish to, uh, I, I suppose, before we conclude the formal part uh, of the launch, I have the pleasure of presenting um, some unique aspects of these coins to some of our dignitaries. But it, by no apology that I want to take the very first coin, every one of these coins is uniquely numbered in a presentation case with some credit from the central bank. But the number one coin, I, the first one minted, I'd now like to present to Peter to to the Institute and to thank them for the support that they have given us here. So Peter. Now I'm not like Ryan Tuberty here and there's one for everybody in the audience, but there are a couple of other people that I do want to present them to. Mary, for your, your design, obviously. Uh, if Mary Gregory is, is here, very good. Um, again, well done to you. Thank you very, very much. Okay. Thank you very much. And 
Um, our colleagues uh, in the central bank, uh, in, in the office of the Collector Coin in particular, wanted me to present this to Tony Duggan, because Tony has been such a support to us in un, un, understanding the matters of Philip Holland. Is Tony here, please? And finally, this one now I have to clip my heels and also get a little reprimand because I mentioned that our uh, Brian's colleagues in Cahal Brew, it's, in fact, it's in, in Collins Barnes. And uh, first time I'm done, I would like you to take this to the defence forces uh, and, and to thank them for all the work they did here today and in supporting the office of the Central Bank. Thank you very much. Um, I suppose I should get a little plug in here as well. By the way, the coins go on sale from the, to the public tomorrow. As I said, there are a limited uh, number of coin sets uh, available. Uh, there are some on sale here today, I understand, after the uh, event. Um, finally, if you'll just indulge me for one moment, I wish to thank especially, uh, and you'll understand, my colleagues in the Central Bank. Um, from where I sit, I don't see the daily endeavours that go on, but I know that they organise a very uh, energetic numismatic committee who give of their time voluntary to us. Um, we have a design, design selection committee who also give of their time to us, uh, and, and a small team uh, in the central bank pull all this t t together. They know, who, they know who they are, and personally, and on behalf of the Commission, I thank them for their endeavours also. Um, <laughs> Um, I hope we have a great uh, rest of the period. Myself and my colleagues are about, uh, and we welcome any approaches you might make to us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And as we approach the end of the uh, formal proceedings, uh, may I just, uh, on behalf of our chairman, John Killeen, uh, and the Institute again, uh, thank you very warmly for your presence today. To Mary, I want to share with you the co-inspiration of the Nautilus design, the very spot in this building you are standing and the crescent shape uh, to my left uh, is, shares the same inspiration and also the inspiration of a wave in the ocean. You drop a pebble in the ocean, in water, and there's a wave. To us, that's a wave of knowledge, the creation of knowledge to enable Ireland to unlock the potential of our largest national natural resource, our maritime territories, ten times our island size. And the co-inspiration of honouring the achievements of our forebears like John Holland, an engineering, scientific innovator of the previous century whose work uh, and legacy lives on. The Marine Institute honoured his legacy in naming Ireland's first national unmanned submarine on display outside our front door, Holland One. This unmanned submarine has been involved in honouring that tradition by being involved in very significant scientific discoveries in recent years, including, and we hear of, a volcanic activity in Iceland that we worry about it might impact our air travel. Most of this planet's volcanic activity takes place in the sea. And Holland One was involved in mapping and discovering one of the largest such areas of activity in the middle of the Atlantic, halfway between this site and the USA, and halfway between Iceland and the Azores, less than three years ago, and mapped that whole activity. It has also been involved in the last two summers in mapping and discovering some of the most unique biological animal communities that exist under the ocean on the very deep canyons of the southwest Cork and Kerry coasts. It is also very involved in climate change studies 
and in developing the next generation of sensor technologies uh, that will be critical to Ireland achieving the potential of our marine resources. So I hope, John Holland, wherever you are today, you feel we are honouring you adequately. And now it only remains for me to introduce our final music pieces and then to invite you to join us uh, for light refreshments. Uh, it is a great pleasure to uh, invite Eilish Blake uh, to take uh, the podium uh, and I believe she's going to give us a rendition of the John Holland Ballad, ballad and to then be followed by Captain Prendergast and his colleagues for a few final melodies. Thank you all again. Eilish. Thank you very much. Indeed, it's a great pleasure for me to be here today representing Liscanner, where John P. Holland was born, and indeed County Clare. As you know, we had a wonderful day there yesterday where we commemorated the 100th year since his death. And it's great to see some of the guests we had yesterday, our Cahir Look, John Crow of County Council, and Mr. Gerard Allard, Director of Services from County Clare. And I'd hope we're keeping the Clare flag flying. And we can empathise with Mayo. We were the champions last year, and I'm afraid... That's all gone for us as well. So this song was written by my brother, Brendan O'Higgins, from Lehinch County Clare in 1978 to honour the memory of John P. Holland. Like John P. Holland, he too was a young teacher who emigrated to the USA. He gave this song to the late, great Michael Russell, traditional Irish musician of Doolan, who recorded it and on one of his albums causing it to be sung far and wide, thus perpetuating the story of John P. Holland for all of us. And it is my pleasure now to sing it for you today. I will not inflict, inflict my tin whistle playing on you, I just want to get the right note. If you bear with me, please. You may talk of famous Irishmen who walked upon the land. Their feats, their deeds, their various creeds, you well might understand. There's one of them that comes to mind, his likes was never seen. He was John Philip Holland, who invented the submarine. T'was in the scanner he was born on the wild west coast of Clare. Not far from the cliffs of Moher that rise high up in the air. This scanner bay stretches far away from Hags Head down to Renine, and John Philip Holland, he invented the submarine. <clears throat> For fourteen years he taught at home in CBS schools like Northman, till in emigration he sailed away and America he did face in Patterson, New Jersey his work became quite keen and there a man he formed his plan and invented the submarine in 1914 the year of the Great War a death appeared in the papers to be read both near and far. The man he died in poverty, but he had realized his dream. He was John Philip Holland who invented the submarine. So come all you sailors, both young and old, come listen unto me. That sailing boats that stay afloat or go down under the sea, be you rush 
Belgian, German, Australian, Belgian, Cuban, or Philippine. Raise your glass in the air for that man from Clare who invented the submarine. Raise your glass in the air for that man from Clare who invented the submarine.